Have you ever wondered if you could 3D print with a CNC router? I have. These machines are typically used to carve wood and occasionally aluminum, but so far I've mostly used mine as a pen plotter. To enable 3D printing, we'll need to add an extruder, hot end, and a controller that understands 3D printing sorts of things. In this video, we'll start things off by installing Clipper and Mainsail on a Big Tree Tech Octopus along with their Raspberry Pi 3B+. Before we even look at the Octopus board, we're going to install Mainsail OS on the Pi. Mainsail OS is a pre-built image for single board computers that includes Mainsail and Clipper as well as various supporting software. In case you're not already familiar, Mainsail is your web GUI similar to Octoprint or Fluid, while Clipper actually controls the printer similar to Marlin, Repeater, Smoothieware, etc. Clipper is a little different than Marlin and the rest as it does much of the heavy lifting on the Raspberry Pi, which lightens the load for the control board to only driving the electronics. To download and install the Mainsail OS image, we'll be using the official Raspberry Pi imager, which you can get over on raspberrypi.com if you don't already have it. Open the imager and select Choose OS. Scroll down and select Other Specific Purpose OS, 3D Printing, Mainsail OS, and 32-bit. The Mainsail folks tested 32 and 64-bit and didn't find any benefit to 64, so they recommend the 32-bit version. Next, click Choose Storage and select your SD card. You want to be really sure here, as Imager will destroy any existing data on the storage device you select. Once you've selected your SD card, click on the gear button in the bottom right of the main panel to personalize your image. Configure your hostname, enable SSH, set your username and password, and configure your Wi-Fi. Click on Save to get back to the main screen, then Write to Write. Confirm your storage device one more time, then Imager will download and install the image to your SD card. This will take a while likely at least a few minutes. Once it finishes writing, it'll verify the image, which also takes a bit of time. Once that finishes, we remove the SD card from the computer and put it in the Pi. Then let's check and make sure Mainsail OS boots and runs like we expect. Now that we know Mainsail OS is happy on the Pi, we need to build the Clipper firmware for the Octopus board. We'll copy the generic Octopus config that ships with Clipper to use as the base for our printer.cfg. At the top of the file, you'll see instructions on which MCU configurations need to be adjusted for the firmware build. We'll do a make menu config, and for my Octopus V1.1, I need to select STM32F446, 32KB bootloader, and a 12MHz crystal. Save that, and we'll do a make-j to compile everything at once, as this is a small enough build to not overwhelm the Pi. Once that completes, we'll flash the firmware to the Octopus board. We need to put a jumper on boot zero to start up in DFU mode, then connect the Octopus to the Pi with the USB cable. Once the board powers up, press and release the reset button. Now if we run LSUSB on the Pi, we'll see the Octopus as STM device in DFU mode. We'll use the device ID from LSUSB when running make flash. Once the flash completes, we unplug the Octopus, remove the jumper from boot zero, and plug the board back in. To connect Clipper on the Pi to the Octopus MCU, we need to first find the serial device by looking in dev serial by ID, and then add that device to our printer.cfg. We also set our min temp for bed and hot end really low since the heaters aren't connected yet and we don't want to see ADC errors shutting the system down. Once the configuration is saved, we'll reboot the Pi for good measure, and then verify in mainsail that Clipper successfully connects to the MCU. Alright, I think that's far enough for today. Next time, we'll get motion and sensorless homing working with some 2209 stepper drivers, and after that we'll start playing around with mounting the extruder and actually pushing plastic. If you have any questions or suggestions for things I could have done differently, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you giving it a like, and if you're interested in seeing how this project progresses, make sure you subscribe for those notifications. Till next time.